Tokyo Live. Tokyo Live. Tokyo Live. Tokyo Live. Tokyo Live. Tokyo Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another interesting uh, symposium uh, from uh, Professor Inouye's event, the Tokyo, it used to be called, but now it's Endoscopy One. Very appropriately named because this is the topmost endoscopy event in the world. I'm delighted uh, to welcome you to one of the most important events of the future. May it not be future, it's already arrived, but artificial intelligence is going to become very big in the future. So uh, in order to talk about artificial intelligence, we have uh, very big uh, names, personalities, and uh, endoscopists and researchers who have joined us for this event. So it's, uh, my name is Pradeep Bandari. I'm the smallest of all the personalities here. I'm from Portsmouth, UK, uh, with an interest in advanced endoscopy. Uh, and uh, I'm joined by a very senior colleague, uh, a, a big endoscopic researcher, Professor Cesare Hassan, but now he has changed his profile and moved to Milan. So Professor Hassan's whole profile has changed in all aspects. So welcome Professor Hassan for, thank you also for joining us and welcome to the symposium. Uh, Thanks Pradeep, uh, welcome from Milan. Thank you. Uh, we then move on to two we in the past we used to call them as rising stars but they're shining so bright that they've risen very high already so not shining anymore well they they're extra shining now so masai and yuchi mori both are from Shoa university they worked together for 20 odd years and now as we know that uh, dr mori has moved to europe for some time and uh, dr misawa is still at Shoa university they both have a huge interest in colorectal neoplasia, starting from kudos pit pattern to ESD to advanced resection. But today they will share their knowledge, interest uh, about AI in colorectal neoplasia. So the plan is uh, Dr. Misawa will uh, talk to us about how AI can help us in colorectal detection of polyps. And then Dr. Mori will tell us how it can help in characterization of polyp. To Masai, all over to you now. I'll thank you very much for uh, your kind introduction, Professor Vandari. And uh, I'd like to express my gratitude for Professor Inoue for giving me uh, this chance to have a presentation uh, in this uh, Tokyo Live 2022. So uh, today I'd like to talk about computer-aided detection for uh, coronoscopy. So let's start my presentation. So this is my show regarding this presentation. So for, at first, I'd like to show very well-known evidence. As you know, the higher the adenoma detection light, the uh, lower the corrector cancer uh, death or uh, instance. Therefore, we endoscopist how to precisely uh, detect adenomas. However, uh, there is also well-known uh, limitation. Unfortunately, uh, human endoscopist missed one fourth of correct adenomas in one uh, coronoscopy. Before uh, I talk about the artificial intelligence, I'd like to discuss the cause of missing the regions. So I think there are two uh, causes of missing the polyps. First one is uh, perceptual error or recognition error. That means uh, polyps are visualized but are not recognized by the endoscopist. Second one is exposure error, uh, which the regions are not visualized due to uh, it is located at behind something. So we have to remember the CDE is not effective for uh, exposure error. Therefore, our main target of CDE is uh, perceptual error. So uh, let me share what the uh, CDE is. CDE or uh, computer detection is a uh, software that can detect and localize uh, polyps which appears on the endoscopic screen. Usually, pipes are localized using the bounding box or rectangle with sound. 
and help the upper lip detection during the uh, real-time colonoscopy practice. Um, with the advancement of AI technology, now uh, several CADE systems are available. This slide shows the commercially available or CADE software. Uh, this software are regulatory approved, uh, so it means a country they can be used in clinical practice. So of them, I'd like to introduce uh, our developed CADE system named Endbrain Eye. Uh, this is the first regulatory approved CADE system in Japan. It has a 98% sensitivity and 93% specificity. And uh, it increased their adenoma detection rate by 7% in clinical study. So uh, regarding the clinical efficacy of the CADE, uh, there is important clinical questions. So does CADE improve adenoma detection rate? So it's a very important question. I think the, the answer is yes. So this is a meta-analysis that investigated the incremental effect of CADE for uh, ADR of colonoscopy. In this study, different several CADE systems were comprehensively analyzed. As a result, CDE significantly improves the ADR by about 10% uh, uh, compared with the standard colonoscopy. However, uh, this is a uh, uh, sub-analysis of the uh, meta-analysis. In that study, the main incremental effect of CDE is only seen in diminutive uh, neoplasia. So there is no significant increase on the advanced adenoma detection rate. So therefore, some people may think uh, that CDE has no impact on cancer prevention effect. So it means the CDE might miss these re regions. Uh, can you identify the uh, regions? So after uh, the angiocarmine that brain shows a uh, uh, virtually spreading tumor and a depressed type uh, early corrector cancers. Uh, such regions are very important precursor regions, and uh, so and so such regions may be missed by the CDE systems. However, uh, the performance of CDE uh, gradually improved by uh, additional machine learning, so I think it is a solvable problem. Uh, Recent Japanese group, uh, recently Japanese group reported interesting reports. This study uh, was much central randomized uh, tandem study that compared adenoma miss rate between the CDE first and the human first. Adenoma miss rate was significantly lower in uh, CADE first group. And interestingly, two uh, LSTs were missed by human first group, but detected by the uh, CADE. So as you can see, this is uh, maybe uh, since I've read it regions, uh, sometimes it's difficult to uh, identify uh, even by the expert endoscopist. Furthermore, uh, a very recently published meta-analysis showed the number of detected uh, large adenomas were uh, significantly improved by using the CDE. So I think uh, there's enough sample size. CDE will provide significantly higher detection rate of uh, large correct adenomas. So regarding the uh, depressed type regions, I'd like to show one uh, our video case report. Uh, this video shows uh, su successful detection of uh, depressed type uh, corrector cancer. So this uh, slightly reddish region was uh, type 2C lesions. So as you can see, there, uh, this CADE uh, localized the uh, depressed type region. So after the detection, we sprayed the endocarmine and showed a uh, clear depression. Pathological, uh, pathological specimen showed a uh, well differentiated adenocarcinoma, and uh, astonishingly, uh, this region uh, was already embedded into uh, some mucosal layer. So, as you see now, the CDE is able to detect not only low risk region, but also advanced adenoma. 
However, uh, the current, uh, currently evidences are slightly limited, so we should wait for further studies. So I'd like to back to the cause of missing lesions. As I said before, CDE is not effective for exposure error. So I think one of the uh, solution is uh, mucosal exposure devices, such as uh, distal attachment. Then uh, is it possible to solve this issue using AI system? So I would like to introduce interesting study. Uh, this systems uh, based on the deep learning uh, model that can evaluate forward examination quality. As, as you can see, the, this novel AI recognizes the forward examination and the uh, evaluates the uh, area of visual mucosa as a percentage. I think this approach would be a very important technology to uh, reduce post colonoscopy corrected cancer by directly reducing the blind spots area. So this is my last topic. So uh, will CDE work in screening setting? Uh, this is an important matter. So at first, the cost effectiveness is an ignorable issue in the screening program. So this is a cost effect effectiveness simulation study uh, of the CDE in screening uh, chronoscopy reported by Yuichi and Professor Hudson. CD CDE is expected to reduce the corrective cancer mortality and surveillance chronoscopy by improving the ADR. Uh, this simulation study showed implementing ECDE into screening program will reduce 57 uh, US dollars per person. However, uh, there are uh, little evidences uh, of CDE in screening program. But recently, uh, Professor Hassan's group reported uh, interesting RCT that evaluated the incremental effect of CDE uh, of ADR in fit-based screening program. Uh, they had enrolled about 850 patients and randomly assigned to the CDE and uh, standard chronoscopy. As a result, the ADR is successfully improved in CDE group. Therefore, CDE seems to improve the ADR in a, a screening setting. Then what about the uh, direct cancer prevention effect? So this is the ultimate clinical question, I think. But uh, we need to know the direct prevention effect rather than ADR, which is a surrogate, surrogate marker of colorectal cancer. Uh, UH is now conducting a large-scale multi-center, uh, multi-international study uh, named OPERA. In this study, after the large-scale RCTs, uh, in screening setting, we subsequently con conduct a 10-year follow-up and compare the correct cancer incidence and mortality. Uh, we convince this study will be a milestone of the AI in chronoscopy practice. We look forward to seeing the results. So uh, this is my last slide. Uh, CDE for chronoscopy is gradually implemented into the clinical practice. And the CDE is a promising tool for improving the quality of chronoscopy. However, long-term outcomes uh, should be investigated. Thank you uh, very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much for a very comprehensive presentation in a very short time. Uh, that was brilliant. Uh, I think the plan would be that we go straight to the talk by uh, Dr. Mori on characterization of polyps and then we can have questions and discussions. So we would like to welcome Dr. Mori now uh, to tell us more about characterization of polyps. Thanks, thanks Bradi. So let me just start the, uh, my presentation on computer edit diagnosis, uh, which is uh, one of the most important parts of computer edit diagnosis in colonoscopy. These are my COIs. And as Dr. Misawa mentioned, there is a computer edit detection or CDE as a first step. But after that, we are able to do the computer edit diagnosis or CDX, which may help us to differentiate between neoplastic and non-neoplastic change of the detected polyps. 
And also we have some other uh, methodologies such as computer added quality assurance or CAQ, but it is out of the circle today. So let me just talk about a computer added diagnosis today, but why we need this kind of technology. Uh, this is because probably because of the lack of the competence in optical diagnosis for us, in, especially in the community best practice. If you look at these eight pictures with some polyps, you can understand the difficulty to, to differentiate the neoplastic change uh, from uh, non neoplastic polyps uh, because some non neoplastic polyps are reddish, which is actually a norm, and also some non neoplastic polyps are whitish. Uh, which is uh, completely different from the uh, our uh, general understanding. So it's not that easy, I would say. Basically, the sensitivity and specificity for, for the recognition of the neoplastic change is less than 90% in community-based hospital, which should be overcome. Then we have a chance to use a computer to provide knowledge and advice to make a nice decision on prediction. Here I'm presenting the uh, market status uh, regarding the computer added diagnosis of colonoscopy. As you can see, there are roughly six or five items from four or five corporations such as Olympus, Fujifilm, Metronic, Audit Vision, or NAC. Uh, probably more items from more companies are available in the rest of the world, but still uh, we have a lot of items on the market. This is a point because we are able to utilize computer edit diagnosis for now. Uh, let me just introduce the Fujifilm uh, product, which is called the CAT Eye. And CAT Eye is able to identify a plastic change represented like here on the bottom of the image. Okay, so uh, listen, gentlemen, uh, this is the uh, GA Genius CADEX device provided by Metronic Corporation. As you can see in the screen, uh, uh, the polyp histology is shown together with the bugs of the uh, polyp location. So which is very, very useful to identify the change of the neoplastic change, neoplastic uh, uh, nature. And the, uh, this is the uh, end brand provided by Olympus Corporation, uh, which is focused on the use of endocytoscope which is a little bit a specialized endoscope because you can get a magnified endoscopic image like this. And after pushing the capture button of your endoscope, you can get a prediction of the histology like this. So uh, actually EndBrain has the greatest uh, uh, benefits uh, or greatest uh, values in terms of the evidence because we have published several papers uh, in a, a really nice design for example, this is the uh, prospective study evaluating endobrain by inclusion of roughly 800 patients in a prospective fashion. And in this study, we found that endobrain uh, can allow us to achieve over 95% NPV for rectal adenoma mass recognition, uh, which is actually satisfying the uh, threshold of PV2, uh, which is the uh, live and such strategy provided, proposed by the uh, ASGE or the other entity. And then if you are able to use EndBrain uh, throughout the, uh, your procedure, you may be able to save a lot of money because uh, you can reduce the number of unnecessary protectants for hyperplastic polyps. Uh, for example, uh, in Japan, uh, you may be able to save roughly $160 million if you introduce end brand throughout the country. So this is a most important topic when it comes to the computer edit diagnosis. The cost issue is the point. And let me just get back to the evidence. Uh, if you compare the evidence of cat X with the cat E, uh, there is a big difference because in cat X area, there is no randomized controlled trial. And we have only two comparative studies published this year in 2022. Let me just introduce two studies because they are very interesting and they are very helpful for us to understand the power and the limitations of CAT-X. So this is the one study published by the Italian friends uh, in endoscopy in 2022. Uh, they included roughly 1,100 patients and as many as 600 diminutive polyps were analyzed with use of CAT-I uh, which is provided by Fujifilm Corporation. And if you look at the table presented here, 
uh, uh, in the red box, you can find the sensitivity and specificity of the endoscopists alone, which are roughly 89%. And surprisingly and disappointedly, this kind of sensitivity and specificity did not increase significantly if you apply the AI. Uh, namely, the sensitivity and specificity are staying uh, roughly 89% or 88%. So there is no statistical difference between the use of AI and non-use of AI. And actually, the similar thing was observed in our study uh, just published in NAGM evidence in 2022, uh, which investigated the use of endobrain. And in this study, we have included roughly 1,300 patients and also 900 diminutive polyps were analyzed. And uh, if you look at the figure or the bar table, bar figures, the sensitivity and specificity did not increase significantly, honestly speaking. However, the, the level of the confidence or the proportion of the high confidence prediction was improved uh, once we introduced the AI. Uh, because without use of the AI, the rate of the high confidence prediction was roughly 75%, which increased up to 92% or 93%, uh, which is a good, good gain or big gain, uh, because high confidence diagnosis is a mandatory for us to achieve the optical diagnosis according to the current guideline. So uh, according to these two studies, there are some pros and cons when it comes to the evidence uh, with regard to CATX. And finally, I'd like to just introduce three new topics. Uh, one is the Cesar Cereal Legion, which is produced by uh, uh, Professor Misawa and published in Gastro in 2022 this year. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, the some kind of white leg uh, uh, whitish uh, lesion was detected with use of the end brain eye. And after the detection, the histology of this lesion was predicted as SSL with use of this specialized CATX system. So this is definitely the way to go after the binary classification from my understanding. And also we have developed some system to differentiate an invasive cancer. Uh, but this is system was designed only for endocytoscopy, but this is on the market. And uh, with use of this system, we can understand if the lesion is embedding to the submucosal layer or just limited within the uh, mucosal layer. And uh, a treatment and assessment of the invasive cancer is completely different from those for adenomas or nanoplastic polyps. So this item is quite useful and quite clinically relevant item, I would say. But the, uh, more people are now getting more interested in the depth of the submucosal cancer because the depth of the invasion is within uh, if. The, the depth of the invasion is within 1,000 micrometer, the risk of the lymphoma metastasis is quite limited. So differentiation of between the deeply invasive cancer and the shallow invasive cancer is quite important matter for us as an endoscopist. As you can see here, uh, there are some papers published in some journals with a really nice, nice uh, discrimination abilities. However, these studies are retrospective studies and there are no AI tools which can uh, accommodate this kind of capabilities. So I think we need some time where we can enjoy this kind of capabilities. So uh, this is my take home message. Uh, honestly speaking, CAD AI is on the market with, and we are able to use that uh, almost every day. However, more evidence and more advanced technologies are expected. Thank you very much for your kind of attention. Thank, thank you, Yuji, for another very comprehensive presentation within such a short time, which gave us an insight into all the systems and what the current level of evidence is. So now this is a perfect platform to start the discussion. And I would like to invite Professor Hassan uh, to make a comment or ask some, uh, he always asks very difficult questions. So uh, Cesare, could you please start with an easy question first? Yes, uh, Pradeep. Um, I feel that uh, we are talking extensively in Europe uh, whether the target uh, of AI should be the experienced endoscopist uh, 
or the inexperienced or less experienced endoscopy. For instance, uh, Masashi, would it make sense to increase the ADR uh, of an endoscopist who already have a, a 62% ADR or should we target more with low ADR? And the same with um, uh, UEK. Do you feel that uh, we are testing AI against uh, a too much good uh, a comparator uh, with uh, CAD-X because the diagnosis that we saw from the expert were amazing. I mean, 95% uh, negative additive value, but we know that in community, it is um, uh, much less. And I think this is important. Uh, for instance, Masashi, yeah. do you feel that uh, an inexpert endoscopist uh, would confirm uh, a non-granular LST detected by CAD-E and Yuichi, would an inexpert endoscopist uh, be able to confirm uh, a CAD X uh, diagnosis? Oh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Hassan. So it's a very important question. So I think, but uh, uh, it is a little bit uh, controversial. However, uh, we sometimes experience uh, uh, non expert endoscopist detects the uh, LST lesion. Uh, by using the uh, uh, CADE system. Uh, however, so uh, it, it, it sometimes uh, depends on the uh, uh, physician scale because so I, as I said in my presentation, for the examination is very important to uh, detect the uh, RST located behind the fold. So I think at least so uh, uh, for, uh, well, so sorry. So I think the, it is important to uh, visual, visualize or expose a uh, 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 wide uh, wide area of uh, mucosa. Mucosa is very important. Uh, so I'd like to add something to Masashi's comment uh, based on the uh, recent publication published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology by Professor Joseph Fun. Joseph Sun in Singapore or Hong Kong. They did a really nice randomized control trial in investigating roughly 3,000 patients in Asian countries. And they found that the use of AI for polyp detection was more beneficial for experts than non-experts. Uh, roughly 5% uh, roughly increment was observed in non-experts group, while 10 or more additional ADR was found in experts group in this study. In this regard, I think the mucosal exposure has a more important meaning than the uh, uh, covering of the recognition error. But of course, it's very controversial. But uh, this study was very, very interesting to me because this was the first study to compare these different, different groups. And uh, when it comes to the computer edit diagnosis, it's more simple, let's say. It's not controversial, I would say it's more beneficial for trainees for non-experts than experts. And if you look at the studies published by the Italian team or your study, Cesare, I think the benefits of using CADEX may be existing in trainees groups or non-experts groups. However, may not be so beneficial for experts. That's my understanding for now. Cesare, can I, can I uh, add another angle to the same debate? Uh, which is um, when we design trials, we focus more on patients rather than the endoscopist. And that is something we need to address going forward yeah. on AI-based trials to answer your question, because we don't really have an answer to that question. The second uh, point to look at when at least when it comes to CADI for detection is, is there any harm of using AI? If with the trials can prove there is no harm of using AI, let's stop debating this expert, non-expert, who benefits, who doesn't benefit. What is the point of that? If you can prove it does no harm, let everybody should be using it because conceptually it's a good idea and, can, and we evidence can prove that it does no harm, then the debate is over. Uh, when it comes to characterization, I think, uh, uh, Yuchi made a very important point, which is about educating and training. And I think this will play a big role 
in improving the confidence of millions of endoscopists who know that this is an adenoma but are not confident. And this will boost up their confidence and alter their, their practice. Uh, go ahead and remove it or say, no, it's hyperplastic and remove it. But yes, we need to have data which shows that it meets those PV criteria. Uh, and that's when I think practice will change. The only missing link, Yuchi, right now, it's great. Even if we have data which shows that it meets PV criteria, it will not change my practice, your practice, or Cesare's practice, despite that, because we don't have accurate sizing system. Uh, what you call as six millimeter, Cesare will call as three millimeter, and my fellow will call as seven millimeter. So how do we change our practice? So I think that the next boost should be towards getting the sizing right. Do you agree? Yeah. But yeah, Pradeep, I feel uh, uh, it makes um, uh, sense, uh, uh, but uh, I'm not uh, fully confident uh, that uh, even when we have uh, sizing, uh, it will be easy, at least in Europe, uh, to, to have uh, a widespread implementation uh, of the reset and discard uh, strategy because of the somewhat obsessive role uh, of pathology in Europe, but I agree with you that uh, if we start to add uh, step after step uh, on CAD X, uh, uh, we can get uh, somewhere. But an additional point, uh, uh, Pradeep, uh, that we can do to implement uh, CAD X, but maybe also to give more power to CAD E, is to, to make it uh, intelligible. That is, uh, we need an AI that explain uh, what it is doing. For instance. Uh, when um, CAD E by Masashi detect uh, a non granular LST, it would be nice if on the right part of the screen uh, you would detect, take care, this is non granular LST with uh, a 3S pit pattern, uh, please characterize, because if not, an inexpert endoscopist would consider it false positive. The same with uh, you, Ichi. I mean, you have a T1, uh, but the machine explain you uh, look according to JNA classification. Uh, this is, uh, a, I don't know, a two or three, a two A, two B or three pit pattern. So I get that uh, an explainable uh, AI. I remember Pradeep that you did uh, a report on an AI that was able to do a report uh, of uh, defining. I think this was already a very good step. I agree. Can I ask a slightly different question? Is there a, a east-west divide when it comes to resect and discard strategy and leave in situ strategy? Uh, so because we have two Japanese colleagues, I know Yuchi is now half European, but he still has Japanese uh, practice and Masashi is there. So can you tell us guys that in Japan, what is the view of the community endoscopists, expert endoscopists? Do they believe that uh, we should be introducing resect and discard and leave in situ strategy. Uh, because in Europe, in the West, there's a very strong feeling and drive from all the societies that this is the direction we need to go. So would like to invite uh, both of you to comment on that. Oh, thank you so much. So in Japan, maybe uh, uh, it's a 50-50. Uh, so half of the experts are uh, believes uh, reject and or live in such a strategy that is very important. And uh, 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 so, so far, so Japanese endoscopists uh, uh, routinely uh, conduct a live in situ strategy if they diagnosed a uh, hyperplastic polyp uh, with, high, uh, with high confidence. So we Japanese uh, conduct a live in situ strategy. However, reject and discard strategy is uh, is uh, rather difficult because uh, uh, Japanese pathologists sometimes uh, uh, op also uh, don't like such uh, strategy. <laughs> sure. Yuchi, why is that? Um, I wanted to speak, and we have almost same situation as you have in Nira with regard to the introduction of the reset and discard strategies. We, we are not so happy to discard any of the specimens that we removed. 
Uh, I don't know why, but uh, it's uh, because of our routine matter. Uh, but uh, in Japan, we have a very unique culture, which is the living side to adenomas, not the uh, hyperplastic polyps. According to the Japanese guideline, we are allowed to leave very tiny adenomas in situ. And because the cost of the colonoscopy in Japan was very cheap, and also the repeated colonoscopy is very common. So sometimes we leave the uh, diminutive adenomas in situ, uh, which means that uh, I think the uh, endoscopists are very confident on their optical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are allowed to to send the patient directly to surgery without taking any biopsies if we are very confident on the cancer diagnosis optically. So this is a kind of difference of the culture, but I don't think there is any difference in terms of the implementation of the discard strategy, which is a very big barrier for us. Excellent. I think that's, uh, and also I noticed uh, that the next direction of travel will be about uh, the depth of invasion uh, and uh, which will help us influence the strategy, whether it's EMR, ESD or surgery. And I'm sure when that comes to Professor Hassan will say, I want AI to specifically tell me which resection strategy should be used. Uh, what, what do you think, Yuchi, in your mind? Should AI go that far? Uh, I, honestly speaking, I don't think so. I think the AI is expected to provide information which will be used by the endoscopists. So I think the providing the treatment is too much from my understanding, because the, even for the T1 cancers, you have several strategies such as the surgery, endoscopy treatment, including ESD, EMR, underwater EMR, or full thickness rejection, and maybe future rejection will be coming. So providing some specific information such as classification, morphology, pit pattern, Janet, that'd be enough for me. Yeah. Uh, I, have I, a, I must one, take a, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Chase. I take, I take the point by Pradeep uh, for uh, Europe uh, and uh, America, because there are still too many unnecessary surgeries uh, and probably too many uh, under treatment by piecemeal uh, of uh, T1 cancer in Europe uh, and um, US. So I must admit that uh, the clinical impact of an AI that tell you, look, this is likely to be lesion, they should not uh, be treated surgically, uh, would be uh, beneficial. But I agree with you, Ichi, that this will take a lot of time. Yeah, I, I think in, I agree with you, uh, Cesare. In, in this regard, I think the providing information on invasion is the most important factor. Yeah. That's why we 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 were engaged in developing Endobrain Plus, which can differentiate the T1 cancer from adenomas. Uh, can I ask? Maybe we're running out of time. A final question to everyone to say that everybody reports. Uh, post colonoscopy, colorectal cancer, interval cancer, missed cancer, whatever we want to call it, the terminology, definition, criteria keep changing, but basically uh, we all miss cancers and there's good data for it. So what, what is the actual reason? What is on, well, there will be multiple reasons. What is the most important reason why we have missed cancer? I'm not talking about missed polyp, I'm talking about missed cancer, why? Is it because the endoscopist never managed to reach the cecum? Is it because they have seen, but they haven't recognized? Or is it because they don't recognize the cancer at all? Uh, what, what is the exact reason? Uh, can, can everybody express that in their mind, what is the main and most important reason why we get missed cancer? Yuchi, can I start with you? Yeah, of course, there's no data, but from my personal understanding, yeah. recognition error will play a really important matter for this. Recognition error, okay. Masashi, what do you think? Yeah, so it's very difficult, but uh, I, I think so, uh, mucosal exposure or uh, exposure error is uh, also important. So it is because so sometimes uh, proliferation is very poor or uh, some, some non-expert does not reach the cecum. It is very 
uh, important uh, cause of the, I think the PCCRC. Sure, hmm. uh, Cesare? I guess that uh, in Europe, uh, what uh, really is the fear is that uh, we miss uh, flat cancer in uh, the proximal colon because unfortunately, the most advanced proximal lesion are also the most uh, non-granular uh, type. And this is to be a problem. For this, uh, I would like to know how many non-granular LST are in any software uh, that was trained. I mean, how many were in the training data set of the CAD-E software? So we have a lot of CAD-E, but probably not all CAD-E are the same when coming to non-granular LST. Interesting, because, it, you know, sometimes when you see these interval cancer or missed cancers coming within two years of a colonoscopy, they are strictured lesion, they are advanced cancers, and you just wonder, this cannot be non-recognition, this cannot be non-exposure. The endoscopist never got that far. So I think it is a combination of things, and I feel one of the important things, which although the CAD-I system, most of the AI system do recognize CECAM as a false positive polyp, but I think that should become mandatory that yeah. colonoscopy is not over till AI tells you this is yeah. CECAM. <laughs> uh, and then we will uh, sort out a lot of this missed cancer problem yeah. just by that little bit of advance. Yeah. So maybe I think uh, we have crossed our allocated time. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining us, but most importantly, Professor Inoue, who keeps hosting these massive meetings, a fantastic event, very comprehensive, and uh, I'm uh, so delighted that we were part of it and could contribute to it. So thank you, Professor Inoue, for uh, 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 inviting us. Thank you, Yuchi, for sparing your time. Masasi, it's really great to see you and hear about where the field is going. Cesare, we see you all the time, so, but thank you again for saying, uh, and uh, goodbye for now. <laughs>